Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of September 25th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Will everyone please take their seats? Or find your seat. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Deutsch. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Uh, present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. So you don't get one. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Joseph E. Franco. Pastor of Sacred Heart Parish, located at 1253 Shakespeare Avenue in the Bronx. All right. Let us bow our heads and remember that we are always in God's holy presence. Heavenly Lord, source of strength and hope, we turn to you this afternoon, our hearts filled with joy, to ask for your blessing on our city council. Guide them as they legislate and fill them with strength as they employ their many talents to enhance the quality of life for all New Yorkers. We thank you now for the gift that they are, not only for their courage and leadership, but especially for their willingness to serve their neighbor. And make our gathering, as we near the end of a month dedicated to suicide prevention, a time of true providence, lead our efforts to ensure the accessibility of mental health care and counselors for all those in extreme isolation and grant peace to the survivors and family members who remain, especially those of our city's first responders. We are also mindful of our Jewish friends and gratefully join them as they prepare to celebrate Rosh Hashanah, the days of awe and repentance, a time for reconciliation 
united in our need to repent, to ask for forgiveness, and to learn to forgive, make our hearts humble and contrite. Then, dear Lord, come to us as we work for your glory and the good of our city. It is with this hope that we offer you our hearts, increase their generosity. Our minds enlighten them, our wills quicken them, our bodies infuse them with energy. May our shared patriotism and loyalty to the city of New York renew our mutual commitment to make us all aware of the hard work that must be done by each and every one every day to ensure tranquility in ourselves, our families, and our community. In your most holy name, we pray, amen. Thank you, Reverend Franco, for that beautiful prayer. I'd now like to ask Councilmember Gibson to spread the invocation on record. Quiet in the chamber. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon to all of my colleagues and those who are present here for today's stated. It is my honor and privilege to welcome to our house my good friend, Father Joseph Franco. He was ordained at St. Patrick's Cathedral in May 2004 by then Archbishop Edward Cardinal Egan. He was assigned to Sacred Heart Parish in the Highbridge community of our district in the West Bronx and has served with honor and distinction as our pastor there since September of 2010. In addition to his pastoral responsibilities, he also serves as a staff chaplain at the James J. Peters VA Medical Center in the Bronx, as well as a department chaplain for the NYPD. Father Franco was the chair of the Northwest South Bronx Catholic School Region Board from 2012 to 2017, as well as chair of the Resource Center for Community Development from 2013 to 2016. He is currently an active and hardworking board member of the following organizations, the Highbridge Community Development Corporation, Highbridge CDC, Hearts Home USA, as well as our beloved Cardinal Hayes High School. Father Franco was born in Brooklyn and raised in Queens, where he attended Archbishop Malloy High School. He began his studies for the priesthood at the St. John Newman Seminary Residence in Riverdale in 1997 after graduating from Manhattan College with his BS in psychology. Father Franco continued his studies for the priesthood at Immaculate Conception Seminary in Northampton, PA and St. Joseph Seminary in Dunwoody, New York from 2000 until 2004 where he earned a Master's of Divinity as well as a Master's of Arts in dogmatic theology. From 2017 until this year, 2019, he attended Columbia University in the city of New York and graduated with a Master's of Science in Strategic Communication. A lot of degrees, but someone for someone who is so worthy. Uh, Father Franco, I've known throughout my entire tenure in the council, previously serving in the State Assembly. He has been a staple in our Highbridge community. I also want to add that Sacred Heart Parish uh, is home to our Sacred Heart Catholic School that has educated so many of our young people in not just Highbridge, but in the broader borough itself. Serving as an NYPD chaplain, as a part of the chaplain's unit, he travels all across the city of New York, as well as upstate, serving with the employee relations unit, providing pastoral opportunities and so much to so many families, including our line of duty families, as well as members of the service. Father Franco is someone who we love and adore. We're so grateful for his work, for laboring in the vineyard, preaching the word of God for the people of God. We are grateful to have you here, Father Franco. Thank you for all the work you do on behalf of the Bronx, of the 16th Council District, and certainly for our great city. We are honored to have you here, and thank you so much for all your work, and may God continue to bless you and order your steps in his work. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I hereby spread the invocation upon the record for today's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson, and again, thank you, Reverend Franco. You have been recognized uh, 
in a way that no one else could be recognized by your council member, Vanessa Gibson. You have been thoroughly recognized. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member Espinal. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of August 14th, 2019 be adopted as printed. Thank you. We'll now have messages and papers from the mayor. <clears throat> M186, Mayor's Management Report. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Uh, I believe on the previous one, the M186 received, ordered, printed, and filed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, on the communication. Uh, Pre-considered M187, council appointment. Rules, privileges, and elections. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M188 through M190, various applications. Coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. Again, we are just voting on land use call-ups right now. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups to couple the items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. Thank you. I vote aye on all except land use 482, 490, 494, and intro 1410B, and apologize for stuttering through that. 1410B. Thank you. Torres. Uh, with permission, I would like to vote yes on all land use call-ups, and I would like to vote yes on all couple of general orders and resolution. Permission granted. Thank you. Cohen. Uh, Rosenthal. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. I vote aye. Thank you. Permission granted. Ben Bramer. With permission, I'd like to vote uh, on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order and all resolutions. I vote aye on all. Permission granted. Adams. I vote aye. Ampre Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Abu Rai. Gibson. Abu Rai. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Uh, I will aye accept LU482. Kozlowitz, Lanceman. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Powers. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Salamanca. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Yes. Valone. Aye and all. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Hello. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. I want to thank you all for being with us today. Before,
Uh, we're going to proceed with today's uh, stated meeting, and if and if there continues to be interruptions to the balcony, we're going to have to ask folks to not sit up there because we have to continue with today's vote. So, if folks want to uh, watch what's going on here today, that's fine, but we cannot have this proceeding be interrupted. So, before we jump into our legislative agenda, I'd like to take a few minutes to acknowledge the two-year anniversary of Hurricane Maria hitting the island of Puerto Rico. So many Puerto Ricans are still recovering from this destruction, and I want to say that this city council remains united with the people of Puerto Rico today and always. Today we are also remembering the 62nd anniversary of one of the most defining moments of the civil rights movement, the Little Rock Nine's first day of school in Little Rock, Arkansas. And today we remember those brave students and their courage and remember that although we have made great strides, we still have a long way to go. Also, as we do at every stated meeting, we remember the heroes who were sickened serving our city in the aftermath of 9-11. I am sad to say that we have lost another one of those heroes. Detective Joe Palilo, age 55, died of a rare form of cancer. He spent a lot of time at Ground Zero searching the debris and rubble for victims, and he was searching for his own brother. The detective leaves behind a legacy of commitment and dedication, and he leaves behind his wife and three sons. Our prayers are with his family and with the department. In addition, the NYPD lost another member by suicide. Jose Pabon, a retired NYPD sergeant, died at his home in Orange County. He was 49 years old. And this is really a crisis, as we have said multiple times for the department. Our thoughts are with Sergeant Pabon's family and all of the NYPD, and we reiterate to anyone who needs help, don't hesitate. We want you to get the help that you need. It is not weakness, it is something that can afflict and affect any New Yorker, no matter what job you are in. Sadly, the FDNY also had a recent loss. FDNY Lieutenant Brian J. Sullivan <clears throat> died of a heart attack following a 24-hour tour. Lieutenant Sullivan dedicated 27 years of his life to the FDNY and leaves behind his wife and two daughters. And finally, I am sorry to report that we have another construction worker fatality, Segundo Huerta, who was killed during a building collapse. I'd like us to have a moment of silence for Detective Joe Palilao, Sergeant Jose Pabon, Lieutenant Brian Sullivan, and Segundo Huerta. Thank you. In addition to the first responders that we lost, I also want to recognize, I also want to recognize Officer Vanessa Medina, who was shot. Uh, uh, if, the, if the sergeants could please, uh, if the sergeants could please clear the, clear the balcony.
Uh, thank you all. If I could uh, please just have uh, some silence, because in addition to the first responders that I had mentioned, I also want to recognize that Officer Vanessa Medina, a proud member of the NYPD, was shot responding to a domestic violence call in Staten Island. And we thank her for her bravery, and we wish her a speedy recovery in the aftermath of that traumatic incident. Today, I also want to acknowledge Hispanic Heritage Month, which began on September 15th. This is a great opportunity to acknowledge the contributions of Hispanic leaders in our great city. And as you heard from the pastor, we also have Rosh Hashanah coming up. And on behalf of the city council, I want to say Shana Tova to all of those who are observing the holiday. And one last thing before we dive into today's agenda, I want to wish a happy birthday to Councilmember Farah Lewis. Is she here? Happy birthday, Farah. We're very proud that you're here. We're proud you're a member of this body. We're, great, we're grateful for you. I hope you have a great, great day. Okay, today we're, we're going to now move on to the following land use items. We'll be voting on 15 landmark designations. Uh, seven of the landmarks are located on Broadway, south of 14th Street in Councilmember Carlina's Rivera, Carlina Rivera's district. Six of the landmarks are related to the history of LG, the LGBT movement, including three in my district. The rest are in Councilmember Chin, Rosenthal, and Rose's districts, and making the incredible history of the LGBT community in New York City known by acknowledging individuals like James Baldwin and Audre Lorde, and the many organizations that have fought for equal rights is something I am very proud of, and I really want to thank the LPC for their partnership on this. I want to specifically thank the chair of the LPC, Sarah Carroll, who was incredible working uh, on this for a long time, so I'm very grateful uh, to the chair of LPC for her team's hard work and her partnership. There are two additional landmark designations, and they're located in Councilmember Powers' and Kalos' district. The other land use items we're voting on include the addition of a commercial overlay at 245 East 53rd Street in Councilmember Powers' district, and at, three, at 3513 Atlantic Avenue in Councilmember Espinel's district. We're also voting on the Kew Gardens Hills rezoning located in Councilmember Lanceman's district to rezone two R2 districts into R2X districts. And finally, on the land use front, we're voting on a UDAP designation and project approval for the Bronx Point project located in Council Briala's district and the Brownsville South development located in both Council Member Espinal and Council Member Barron's district. From the Finance Committee, the Council will vote on a transparency reso as well as two Article 11 property tax exemptions. The first is Catherine Sheridan Apartments in Councilmember Constantinides' district to preserve 240 units of affordable housing. And the second is Lafayette Morrison Apartments in Councilmember Salamanca's district, which makes an adjustment to a tax exemption previously granted by the Council earlier this year. I want to thank the staff that worked on these, Noah Brick and Stephanie Ruiz. <clears throat> Moving on, the Council will be voting on the following pieces of legislation. First, the Council is voting on a repeal bill related to conversion therapy. Introduction 1682A, sponsored by myself, would repeal Local Law 22 of 2018, which bans offering conversion therapy for a fee in New York City. Conversion therapy is a harmful and discredited and destructive practice that seeks to change a person's sexual orientation to conform to heterosexual norms. Shortly after its enactment, Local Law 22 was challenged in court to avoid the possibility of a negative legal precedent, LGBT advocates, civil rights organizations, legal service organizations requested that we repeal our law because minors will still be protected by the law that was passed by the state legislature and signed by the governor, which covers the entire state earlier this year. This was a painful and difficult decision that was made after leading LGBT advocates requested that the council repeal our 2017 bill, and after intense deliberation, the council concluded this was the best, that it was best to take this drastic but difficult step. Our courts have changed considerably over the last few years, and we cannot count on them to rule in favor of much needed protections for the LGBTQ community. To be clear, this 
alleged therapy is barbaric, destructive, inhumane. It is quackery. It has been discredited by the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, the American Pediatric Association, and every association that deals with young people and the well-being of a person's mental health. I listened to the advocates who know the issue best, and I tried to make the right decision, and we believe this is the best path forward. Uh, and I really want to thank the staff that worked on this, Balkis Mirig. Next, the council will commemorate New York City Climate Week, and we're going to be voting on a series of climate-related bills. Climate, uh, the climate emergency is the issue of our time, and it is incumbent on all of us, particularly those in government, to act. The first of our bills is sponsored by Councilmember Costa Constantinides, the chair of our, of our Environmental Protection Committee, and that's Introduction 49A, which would require the Department of Citywide Administrative Services to study the feasibility of utility scale energy storage systems in each city building. Energy storage is the next practical step that buildings can take to reduce their carbon emissions. It is useful both for storing excess power generated by on-site solar and wind and for drawing power from the grid when emissions are low. DCAS shall install utility-style energy storage systems on all city buildings where the study determines that installation is cost-effective. Introduction 426A would require DCAS to study the feasibility of solar water heating and thermal energy systems in city buildings. Solar water systems are more energy efficient than solar photovoltaic systems and may be more cost effective for heating water and building spaces. This bill would also require the installation of solar water heating and thermal energy systems where the traditional hot water and space heating equipment has reached the end of its useful life where it is cost effective. Next, introduction 1140A would require an agency or office designated by the mayor to study off-hour deliveries to city facilities and implement such deliveries where it is feasible at city facilities in the Central Business District, which is south of 60th Street in Manhattan, and at least two other highly congested areas outside of the Central Business District. Reducing congestion gets cars and trucks off the road, and it is time for the city to be thoughtful about how its own operations contribute to the problem, and I want to thank from the staff, James DiGiovanni, for his work on those bills. Next is another bill related to Climate Week Introduction 140A, sponsored by Council Member Steve Levin, and it would require the Mayor's Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability to conduct a study regarding the feasibility of implementing one or more community choice aggregation programs. Community choice aggregation permits individual electric utility customers to join together to purchase their energy. Their combined market power may allow them to negotiate better rates or demand more renewable energy than they would otherwise be able to purchase individually. If the study recommends implementing community choice aggregation, the office would develop a plan for implementing such programs. And I want to thank the staff that worked on this bill, uh, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, and Ricky Chawla. Next, the council will vote on a small business bill. Our small businesses are the backbone of our economy, and I'm so very happy the council is acting on this uh, item today. Introduction 1410B, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson, would strengthen the commercial tenant harassment law by changing the current standard of an act or omission that is, quote, intended to cause a tenant to vacate the premises to an act or omission that would, quote, reasonably cause a commercial tenant to vacate the property or surrender or waive rights as a lawful tenant. Further, the bill adds to the current list of behaviors that constitute tenant harassment, which include continued interruption of essential services, to now also include discrimination based on a protected class and inquiring to a tenant's immigration status or threatening a tenant uh, based on such status. And I want to thank the staff that worked on this, Stephanie Jones and Rachel Cordero. Finally, the council is voting on two bills and a resolution that will help prevent homemade firearms from becoming more common in New York City. The last thing we need is more guns in our city. With both of these bills, I am proud of the council for anticipating a problem that could get worse and proactively taking steps to prevent it. So the first is Resolution 866A, sponsored by Councilmember Danique Miller, and it calls on the United States Congress to reintroduce and pass the 3D Firearms Prohibition Act and calls on the President to sign it. 
Next, introduction 1548, also by Councilmember Miller, would require the NYPD to report on the number of seizures of ghost guns and 3D printed guns, which can also be made at home using materials and equipment that someone can buy online. 3D guns are dangerous for everyone, including the people who try to use them. It is important we are not only prohibiting these weapons in New York, but that we are also tracking seizures of these guns so we can monitor the problem and make sure that it does not get worse. And lastly, introduction 1553A, sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, would make it a misdemeanor to possess an unfinished lower receiver, which is a piece of metal that can be ordered online and turned into a gun without a serial number or without a registration number. It is uh, referred to as a ghost gun. There is absolutely no reason for anyone to use these pieces other than to make an illegal firearm. So I am proud of Helen and I am proud of the council for taking this step and prohibiting New Yorkers from owning or selling these items. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, uh, Daniel Collins and Brian Crow. That is our land use finance and legislative agenda. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. And I just want to take a slight departure from the agenda um, just to address what has recently happened. I, as many of you know, my predecessor over 15 years ago, James E. Davis, was shot and killed in these chambers. And I don't think there is not a member in this body that doesn't think about that um, upon taking the oath here in the city hall chambers. And it's so important that while we recognize and believe in freedom of speech, to come into an official meeting and to curse at, to yell at, to throw things over the balcony, while you're standing in the balcony, overlooking us puts each and every member and our staffs and everyone um, in serious jeopardy. We are very vulnerable in the seats that we sit in. So we recognize and want all people to have the ability to come here. This is the people's house. But it's important that we come here with a level of respect, that we listen to one another. This is a diverse city with a diverse body. And we are not always going to agree, but we do not handle that by cursing at one another and compromising the safety of every individual. We're living in different times right now. And so it's important that we respect the spaces that we're in. And in addition to that, that we listen to one another. So I just want to state that for the record because we have what's known as elections. They happen every four years. That is what democracy is about. If you do not agree with the positions or the issues that are being addressed here, you should open up a campaign and you should run for office. And that's the way we handle things. This level of outbursts and compromising one's safety is spiraling our country into a place of anarchy. And we cannot allow that to happen. So it's important that we respect one another. I'd now like to move from communication um, from the speaker into the discussion of general orders. And we have one member that has signed up for that. And I'd like to call up Council Member Costa Costantinides, who's doing phenomenal work in areas around making sure that we have an environment and a community for generations to come to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and, and thank you for your leadership always, and our great speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, happy Climate Week, everyone. Uh, we must reaffirm our commitment to do everything in our power to draw down our carbon emissions in a way that reflects real science. As we saw last week, more than four million children around the world went on strike to demand bold climate action. And let me just say to Alexandria and Greta and Zia and Jamie, and Naomi, Sophie, and every other climate striker, we hear you. We hear you in this chamber. Uh, the Climate Mobilization Act that we passed back in April was a major step, but it's one step in a longer journey. Today we take several more steps along that path. I ask for your, my colleagues' support on Intro 49A and Intro 40, 426A. These bills direct the city to assess where feasible on city buildings to install battery storage so renewable energy electricity generated by wind or solar can be stored on site and whether it's feasible to install solar thermal technology. Uh, in addition, I hope my colleagues will support 1140A, which will direct the city to begin a process of moving forward to a night delivery system in city buildings. We as a council need to be focused that we are leading the way in the city when it comes to cutting emissions, cutting congestion. Uh, our transportation sector is about 25 percent or more of our emissions, and we have to do our best and lead it, it by example. So this would study lower than uh, in Manhattan, lower than 60th Street, 
uh, in two areas in the boroughs uh, where, that are congested. It would study city facilities for overnight deliveries and where it made sense to do so, we would implement deliveries on those buildings. How many, you know, I remember working uh, in a toy store way back in my previous life and having deliveries done off peak to make sure that we weren't imp in impacting the community with congestion. Uh, so I wanna thank everyone that you know, worked on this bill, Jeff Baker, Tirza Nasser, Megan Chen, uh, uh, Samara Swanston, James Giovanni, uh, my staff, Nick Wazowski, and everyone who is helping us to do this today. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you so much for your leadership. We will now go to a report of special committees. None. And just give us one moment. Begin again. Report of special committees. Uh, none. <coughs> Excuse me. None. Sorry. Reports of standing committees. Report of the committee on civil and human rights. Intro 1682A. Conversion therapy. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on environmental protection. Intros 49A, 140A, and 426A. Energy systems and feasibility study. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on finance. Preconsidered Reso 1059. Transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 536 and Reso 1067 and LU 537 and Reso 1068. Tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on land use. LU 481 and Reso 1069 through LU 495 and Reso 1083 on page six, landmark designations. Coupled on general orders. LU 508 and Reso 1084 and LU 509 and Reso 1085, Kew Gardens Hills rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 510 and Reso 1086 and LU 511 and Reso 1087, various UDAPs. Coupled on general orders. LU 517 and Reso 1088, Atlantic Avenue rezoning. Coupled on general orders. LU 530 and Reso 1089, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, intros 1548 and 1553A. Homemade firearms. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Preconsidered Reso 1060, Committee Changes. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M187 and Reso 1090, approving the appointment of Alana Sivin, Board of Corrections Task Force. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 1410B, Commercial Tenant Harassment. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 1140A, Off Hour Deliveries. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons commissioner of deeds a couple of general orders and at this time I'll ask for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar but before I do that I was remiss in not wishing our colleagues council member Diana Ayala and council member Robert Cornegie whose birthdays it was yesterday so it is a busy oh Rob left so happy birthday Diana uh, thank you all happy birthday and then at this time I ask for a roll call vote on all the items on today's general order calendar Adams Aye on all. Amprey Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to call my colleagues' attention to land use 511 and the accompanying Reso 1087 and encourage you to vote aye on those two matters. Uh, two of those projects are in my district. The third is in my colleague's district. And they came to me with a beautiful design, and they had a four-story building with an elevator, which is a challenge, a six-story building, and these were small infill projects. And the projects were great, and then they came to me with the AMIs. And they had 50% at 50 and below, and then they had 50% at 80% of the AMI. And I said, this is not something that I can support, as you may know. The AMI in my community is about $38,000. So I'm not going to allow 50% of the apartments coming in to be at 80% of the AMI, because that would be contributing to gentrification. So I do want to thank land use and HPD. We did go back and forth, and we now have a project that has at least 50%, actually it's 75% at 70 and below, or 60 and below, and 25% at 70%. So I want to encourage you all to make sure that you're not contributing to gentrification 
by bringing in large numbers of people at an AMI that does not exist in your community and which your community members will not be able to afford. So vote aye on all. Thank you. Brennan. I uh, vote aye on all with the exception. Sorry, and oh. they kept the elevator. Councilmember Brennan. I uh, vote aye on all with the exception of land use uh, 482 and Reso 1070. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Matteo. Uh, I vote aye on all except uh, land use 482, 490, 494 and their accompanying resolutions. I vote no and also no on 1410B. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Deutsch. Uh, no on 1410 and I in the rest. Diaz. I don't know. Espinal. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to thank my colleagues and, and certainly the speaker for their support of the commercial tenant harassment legislation, which is before uh, the council today, intro 1410B. Um, I want to thank the chair of the Small Business Committee, Chair Mark Joni, and the members of the committee for sp supporting this legislation. This has been around for quite some time, which really provides a number of safeguards and protections for many of our commercial tenants. I think what I recognized in my district following the Jerome rezoning, that while we put a lot of protections in place for residential tenants, um, we certainly uh, lagged as it related to protections for commercial tenants. And what we found in our district, a number of our small businesses who were renting space in our area, predominantly along Jerome Avenue, were victims of harassment where essential services such as heat and hot water were denied and disrupted. Um, and many of them were men and women of color uh, and as well as our immigrant businesses. So this bill takes a great step forward in expanding the kinds of acts and omissions that actually constitute commercial tenant harassment, which would recognize threatening a commercial tenant based on any tenant belonging to a protected category, as well as requesting identification that would disclose the commercial tenant citizenship status, as well as unreasonably refusing to cooperate with tenants permitted repairs of construction activities. Um, this would not be possible without the United Small Business Coalition of NYC, and I want to thank ANHD, Brooklyn Legal Services, Chahaya CDC, the Commercial Development Project of Urban Justice Center, Cooper Square Committee, Fourth Arts Block, the Municipal Arts Society, Northwest Bronx Community and Clergy Coalition, the Street Vendor Project, WEDCO, as well as VOLS, Volunteers of Legal Service. Thank you for your collective support to protect commercial tenants throughout New York City. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Joan I. I on all except uh, land use 482, 490, and 494. Uh, I and all, and I'd like to take this opportunity to commend uh, the majority leader for her remarks that she gave uh, just a short time ago and to wish all of my colleagues and all New Yorkers who are celebrating a happy and healthy uh, Rosh Hashanah 5780. May it usher in a year of peace for all people. Thank you. Thank you. Holden. I and all. Kalos. I and all. Ku. I on all. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. My colleagues, today we're voting on intro 140, which would implement a comprehensive study of community choice aggregation, otherwise known as CCA for our city. We are in a climate emergency. 
Climate change poses an imminent threat to our most vulnerable communities and the world at large. If we want to leave the world a better place for our future generations, the status quo is simply unsustainable. Earlier this year, New York City passed historic legislation through the Climate Mobilization Act, led by Councilmember Konstantinidis, setting us on the path to a better future. As we work to achieve our requir required citywide reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, we need to think critically about what tools we need to continue to drive the energy transition to renewable options. Community choice aggregation provides an opportunity for transformative change in the way that consumers connect to and purchase their energy and shifts the decision-making power to the consumer away from the energy companies. However, it is critical that we do this thoughtfully and in the interest of all of our communities. The mistakes that we've seen from companies like Con Ed and National Grid show us that we need to do better. A CCA program can and should include, through involvement with community groups, um, and should, should include, uh, excuse me, uh, and uh, thorough involvement with community groups and prioritize local energy generation and local renewable capacity to create a more resilient New York. And it must be built on a foundation of consumer protection and equity. Our shift to renewable energy can be accessible to all New Yorkers as long as affordability is at its core. CCA is a critical step in pushing on our renewable energy development and the scale of New York City offers us the chance to be a nationwide leader in implementing a model that works for everyone. I want to thank all of my colleagues for your support um, <clears throat> uh, for this legislation and continued commitment to investing in a greener future. Um, and I want to uh, thank uh, Samara Swanston uh, as well uh, for her help on this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Koo. Uh, I will eye on uh, all LU uh, uh, items except LU 482. Thank you, Councilmember Ku. Councilmember Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Lewis. Aye on all. Mizell. Uh, I and all accept uh, land use for it too. Menchaca. I and all. Miller. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, today we uh, voting on a package of legislation that we worked on, uh, myself and Councilmember Rosenthal, to address a new threat to our communities, and that is the ghost gun. Intro 1553. Uh, introduced by Councilmember Rosenthal, will ban the possession of unfinished lower gun frames or receivers. My bill 1548 will require reporting from the NYPD on the seizure of such guns. We also have Resolution 866, which also sp sponsors calls for Congress to reintroduce and pass the 3D Firearm Prohibition Act. This package of legislation will keep dangerous, untraceable ghost guns off our streets. Recently, online sellers have been advertising and selling unfinished guns, targeting New Yorkers, highlighting the fact that they are untraceable due to the fact that they have no serial numbers. Essentially, we are faced with do-it-yourself do guns showing up on our streets. Recently, um, a county, upstate county in Syracuse, New York, announced that illegal guns have been infiltrated their streets and we would be foolish not to recognize that we will be facing the same plight. I'd like to also like to commend uh, the actions taken by Attorney General James earlier this week ordering online gun companies to so stop selling do-it-yourself rifles in New York State. These actions on the city and state level represent the aggressive modernization of gun laws that must be taken to effectively protect our communities. In Southeast Queens, we are currently experiencing an increase in gun violence, and it must be addressed. It is our duty to work with our partners in government and local communities to proactively pass legislation to avert these tragedies. I'd like to thank Councilmember Rosenthal and Speaker Johnson, and, uh, and I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Moya. How do you vote, Councilmember Miller? Councilmember Miller. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Reynoso. I vote aye. Richards. I vote aye. 
Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I just first want to congratulate Alana Sivin. I'm proud to call her one of my constituents, and she's going to be confirmed today to the Board of Corrections Transgender, Gender Nonconforming, Non-Binary, and Intersex Task Force. Clearly, she's made real criminal justice reform one of her priorities, and I know she'll be a tireless advocate and ally for the TGNC and B New Yorkers who enter our criminal justice system. I also want to thank all of my Progressive Caucus colleagues for, and, and the Women's Caucus as well for coming together to introduce this package for real child welfare system reform. Uh, this body continues to inspire me. And to you, Mr. Speaker, I have to thank you for mentioning Hurricane Maria today. Y que viva Puerto Rico. I vote aye. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye and all. Traeger. Permission to, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, so I want to just, uh, first of all, thank, appreciate the comments before the majority leader, very poignant remarks. Mm -hmm. And I want to actually convey thanks to the speaker and all my colleagues, uh, because uh, yesterday I had a, had a chance to greet and meet some of the new full-time social workers mm -hmm. that will, are working in our school system that was, they were in, in orientation at the UFT, these are clinical social workers working full time for our students, and they are so gung ho, motivated, and so pleased that we support them. And they wanted to say thank you to the speaker and to this council that got it done. Over 200 full time new social workers in our schools, the biggest investment I think anywhere in the country. So we will be doing a better job. There's more work to do, but a better job of meeting the social emotional needs of our kids, better academic outcomes and we'll be breaking the school to prison pipeline all at the same time by our speaker and this council. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Ulrich. I have to switch a vote here. Not the first time that's happened, but uh, let me uh, go back to land use. I have uh, to Put vote. him on the clock, Madam Thank Majority you, Leader. please. Thank you. Uh, land use 482, 490, 494. Not happening. No one knows and the accompanying resolutions. And uh, I'm voting no on intro 1410B. But I on everything else. I don't know what else there is, but I'll vote yes on it. Thank you. Thank you. Valone. Madam Majority Leader, brief moment to explain my vote. Permission granted. Quiet in the chamber, please. It's really to say thank you to my legislative director. This will be his last stated hearing. He's been with me from day one. My staff, I've been very blessed to keep my staff with me all from day one. And to have my, see Michael take the next step is Michael Young, who's dying about me speaking about him. But he's off to law school and he's on to his next career path. And I wanted to personally thank him. He actually held law school off for one year to make sure I got reelected. That's how dedicated Michael is. So I, I wish you all the best. You have made District 19 proud. And you've been a true friend to me and my whole family. So, Michael, God bless you, and good luck in everything you do. I know. Thank you, and congratulations. Jaeger. Madam President, may I have the excuse to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. Um, I plan to vote uh, against LU-42, LU-490, LU-494 with the accompanying uh, resolutions, uh, R1070, 1078, 1082. Um, as I've explained since I began here in this council, uh, I, I, I believe that we have- uh, Quiet in the city. chamber. I, I believe in our city there are great uh, properties and uh, institutions and wonderful uh, pieces of architect architecture that deserve protection and that deserve landmark status. Um, my, my discomfort comes from when the city of New York uh, via its Landmarks Preservation Committee uh, Commission, uh, Bigfoot's an owner and seizes their property in effect in violation of the Fifth Amendment. Uh, property owners have the right to have their property that they purchased and they put their lives into. In particular, one of these properties um, is, uh, is a store which was founded nearly a century ago. Um, property owners, when they purchase a property and they buy it fair and square, and then the city of New York later after they've owned it for some time, decides to come along and, in effect, seize it from them.
the city ought to provide recompense as the Constitution requires, and it doesn't. So I will be voting no on those three, and I vote no on intro 1410. Uh, the penalties involved uh, for, the in, for the violations as discussed in the statute are to increase from 1,000 to 10,000. However, the, um, uh, the fiscal impact statement that we were provided with uh, estimates that there will be zero revenue from the statute. If there is to be zero revenue from a statute that is raising a fine, then this seems to me not to be a problem. But if there is a problem, then in my estimation, I don't believe that the penalty should go to the city. To the it should rest. go to the injured party, the tenant that was harassed. I don't know why the city puts a tax on an owner that acted badly and then takes the tax and keeps it for ourselves instead of giving it to the, to the tenant who was actually harmed. And with that, Madam President, I vote aye on the remainder. Thank you very much. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1410B, which was adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions. And LUs 490 and 494 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, and five negative, and zero abstentions. And LU 482 plus reso 1070, which was adopted by a vote of 36 in the affirmative, and eight negative. And the revised land use call-up vote is now 44 in the affirmative and zero negative, Councilmember Ulrich. <laughs> and now we will go into introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? Okay. Since we have no members that wish to speak on today's resolutions, I will now read today's resolutions onto the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on today's resolution should register your vote with the clerks at the dais. Resolution 866A, an amended resolution calling on the United States Congress to reintroduce and pass and the President to sign the 3D Firearms Prohibition Act. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you. We will now move into general discussion. We have two members that are on the docket to speak. We have Council Member Moya, followed by Council Member Adams, followed by Council Member Levin. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the speaker and the staff and the uh, New York Taxi uh, Workers Alliance for working with me on uh, this bill and advocating for all professional drivers. Uh, right now we have a system that fails to protect for hire drivers from predatory financing. Uh, time and again I've heard from uh, for hire drivers tell horror stories about signing contracts that they didn't understand and getting locked into payments that they could never afford to keep up with. Uh, in some cases they paid as much as $90,000 to lease used cars. Uh, for perspective, leases for yellow cabs are capped at $42,900. And thanks to the hard-fought battle by the drivers and the Taxi Workers Alliance, uh, it's time for the four hire drivers to get the same protection. Uh, too many professional drivers uh, feel uh, hopeless, trapped inside uh, sinking cars that's drowning them in debt. Four hire drivers are working class New Yorkers, just like yellow cab drivers, and deserve the same protection that they've won when the taxi, when the yellow cab uh, drivers won in 2012. This bill is simple. Uh, it would mandate that the TLC extend financing regulations for the for hire sector. Uh, we're not reinventing the wheel here. Uh, these uh, protections already exist, and it's time that they exist for for hire drivers as well. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Adams, followed again by Councilmember Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and I'd like to especially thank 
uh, Councilmember Steve Levin for his leadership in this package of uh, ACS legislation. I'm pleased to introduce today intros 1715 and 1716, which I encourage my colleagues to sign on to. Intro 1715 would require ACS to create a program to provide access to legal services for parents or guardians after an indicated report during an ACS investigation, specifically during the fair hearing process. Intro 1716 would require ACS to report on the total number of emergency removals disaggregated by race, household income, and single parent status. There have been long-standing issues in the ACS system. Immigrants, low-income New Yorkers, and people of color across our city are disproportionately affected by the ACS system and intro 1715 and 1716, along with the entire Progressive Caucus package introduced today, will be a step in the right direction. We must do everything possible to prevent unwarranted separations, especially for those who are only guilty of parenting while poor or black or immigrant. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. We will close with Councilmember Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I want to thank Councilmember Adams for her incredible leadership on this package of legislation. Uh, I am uh, very excited to introduce uh, parts of this legislation um, to reform our child welfare system to better support parents and families. Every step of the ACS investigation process can be confusing, scary, and unsettling and leave parents feeling absolutely alone. The bills we are introducing today with my colleagues will bring greater accountability, transparency, and representation and legal counsel to parents and families within the child welfare system. We have work to do in making our city's child welfare system fairer and more just. Currently, 50,000 people are on the state central registry list. Whether or not there's a court case against them which can impact their employment and put them at risk of involvement in the criminal justice or immigration system. Women and families of color are particularly at risk of being reported to the SCR. In fact, the large majority of reports that ACS receives and are required to investigate through the SCR are for cases of neglect, issues that are directly related to poverty and should not be used to determine whether a person's child is separated from them. Families deserve to know all of their rights during an investigation, including how to appeal a case, how to get off the SCR list, and access resources that they need to take care of themselves and their children. Families belong together, and I am proud to work alongside all of my colleagues in putting forward this comprehensive package to achieve concrete system-level reforms. Thank you. Thank you. We will have, uh, now we will have Councilmember Robert Cornegy, if you would vote on the record at this time. Yes, with unanimous consent, I'd like to vote. Excuse me? With unanimous consent, I'd like to vote. Permission granted. You sure? Positive. I vote aye on all. Thank you, and with your vote, I will now, we just have to make one more uh, alteration. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 1410B, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions, and LEUs 490, 494 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, and six negative. And LU 482 and Resolution 1070, which was adopted by a vote of 37 in the affirmative and 8 negative. The revised land use call up vote is 45 in the affirmative, and 0 negative. Thank you. And now I will call on Councilmember Danique Miller to close us out. Thank you so much, uh, Majority Leader. First, and, and I, I want to thank you 
and I want to thank all our colleagues and certainly the speaker that came out this morning to support uh, uh, pay equity for EMS and pay equity in general. We know it has been a struggle and a fight for this, this body for the past four or five years and I'm excited about the work that has been done. And so uh, myself along with the majority leader and other members of the, of the council are introducing legislation today um, on reporting, on reporting on EMS workers that leave EMS service to go to other agencies in order for them to have a quality of life that they so richly deserve. And then secondly, a resolution calling on uh, salary parity for EMS uh, service, uh, which makes it comparable to the other emergency services, FDNY and NYPD. So excited about that, asking our colleagues to continue to um, join us in this fight and sign on to the legislation. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you for your leadership, and I'll just close with a correction. LUs 490 and 494 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions. And now we will close today's meeting with Speaker Corey Johnson. The stated meeting of September 25th, 2019 is hereby adjourned.